Welcome to the Echo Ratings Eventing Podcast and a cup of tea show very kindly sponsored by NAF. And today's guest is a lady who has been on the show before. Uh, She is on British soil for the first time that we are speaking to her though. And it is Sarah Clark who is bidding for her first burley in just a few weeks. Sarah, it is so good to have you on the show and I'm so excited to hear about your huge adventure. Well, thank you so much. Just hearing you do that intro, I'm like, really? That's me? <laughs> <laughs> you said just before we started recording, you were like, I'm actually here, but I feel like I'm about to wake up and it's all a dream so far. I hate to tell you, but the dream is going to get a whole lot crazier before you wake up. Yeah, I can. And the, uh, a lot tougher, I'm sure, and a lot more intense and a lot more nerves, I'm sure. But I look forward to every bit of it. Okay, so before we we dive in and talk about Burley this year, I think for anybody who isn't familiar with your story, and I guess to introduce us to um, your noble steed, if I could call him that, LV Balu Jeans, um, just give us a bit of background on you, and because you were born here in the UK, but you've lived over in Australia since you were tiny. Uh, yes, so we, my family moved out to uh, Australia. Um, long time ago and so grown up in Australia but um, we kind of came over to the UK before COVID very regularly kind of at least once a year to visit family and my dear aunt has um, plied me with video recording VHS recordings horse and hounds of British eventing you know since I was a tiny tot and obsessed with ponies and that's kind of fed my eventing passion and um, my kind of admiration for badminton and burley and always, always wanted to to come and try and ride at badminton and burley and Balu Jeans, Jeans, as he's known at home, I got him as a five-year-old and he's now 11 and he's an incredible jumper and, you know, we're, we're not here to try and win the thing people might think it's oh, why'd you come all this way when you've got no chance at winning but that's not my goal I just want to be there and experience it and you know it's the pinnacle of the sport and I just want to have a crack and I think jeans is the kind of horse that um or is as near as I'm going to get to the kind of horse that can give me that opportunity it's amazing. So when did your, I guess, your Burley dream obviously has been alive and kicking for some time, but you and I have in the past kind of said, oh, you know, would you come over? Because you've done Adelaide Five Star. That was your first five star a few years ago, but that was 2019, I think. Obviously, we've had a whole host of, um, you know, travel related issues with COVID and everything else. Mm-hmm. So I guess when did your Burley 2022 dream become something that you thought actually this could happen yeah so the original plan was to do Adelaide five star 2019 and then maybe spend another year consolidating at four star and maybe another Adelaide five star in 2020 and then I might be ready to come over but of course COVID hit and shut down everything and stuffed up all that plan so COVID was very frustrating because I felt like I was losing time and I was finally kind of ready to get this dream underway and it had was halted. Um, so when uh, things kicked back off again after COVID, I was really keen to kind of work towards getting over here. I thought about badminton earlier in the year, but thought, you know, it's been three years or so since the horse had run a long format and it was maybe a bit presumptuous to try and come over straight into a badminton and then um, the horse did a four-star long so we aimed for Melbourne four-star long in June Um, and not long before that the news broke that our Adelaide five-star that normally runs in uh, November or October was cancelled yet again or postponed till next year so we were not going to get a Southern Hemisphere five-star again and that just made me go, stop it, I'm going, I'm ready, <laughs> I've been saving the money, I, I want to go, give it a crack, and I can't wait anymore, let's do it. So, uh, not, not, it's pretty, been pretty recently, really, that it's I was going to say, that, that's happened pretty quickly, and I am 
like I totally understand where you're coming from and fair play to do it because actually you know you could say oh I'll wait till next year and all the rest of it but ultimately you've got a horse who is fit qualified ready to go and do you know what that you know that's tough enough in itself to be able to get to a five star that's right and I would hate to you know wait until I was more prepared or done more experience and the horse do a silly injury or me do a silly injury and something like that and and waste the opportunity so yes that's kind of the theory so talk us through the last kind of whirlwind few weeks then so you have left your entire life behind in Australia for a period of time um what have you had to get sorted at home to enable you to make the trip first of all I guess well my long-suffering mother has had to agree to take care of all my she's she's non-horsey but she's had to agree to take care of all my other horses while I'm away. They all live out, um, which is okay, but she does just have to go and throw feed at them and make sure they're alive and things like that. And um, it will be a real shame not to have her with me at Burley. But at the end of the day, needed someone to take care of horses at home and, and she admitted that she's probably not going to be that helpful at Burley because she's you know not a groom or anything like that so she was happy to stay home and wish me well and then so it was five days traveling I think I left home on Monday early morning before dawn and had a nine or ten hour drive to Melbourne and then the horses the horse flew out of Melbourne airport the next day we went Melbourne Bangkok Bangkok, Doha, Doha, Amsterdam, because there were no direct flights to Heathrow before Burley, and then trucked from Amsterdam to Wiltshire and arrived late Friday afternoon. Um, what a trip. Look, what an absolute trip. And this was just you and Jeans? Yes. Yep, just me and Jeans. There was another little um, thoroughbred mare that was his, his company uh, I think she's going off to Newmarket to to have a date with a nice stallion so um <laughs> yes just me and jeans it was long and epic but also I learned a lot from the process and um he's actually arrived looking re- really quite happy he's eating dr- been eating and drinking the whole time his temperature's been stable he looks quite bright I don't think I've caught up yet but he looks okay and that's probably the best way to have it Absolutely. I was going to say it's a proper shock to the system. Um, what about, because he would be well used to traveling like long truck journeys in Australia, but I take it he's never actually flown before. Um, well, that was my my theory that, yes, we do a lot of trucking around, you know, he has up to 24 hour journeys in Australia, going from kind of South Australia to New South Wales and things like that. Um, so yes, he's a good traveler and a good trucker, but um, you know, we get them off every four hours and let them get their heads down and things like that. So that was a big difference that had me a bit worried. Um, he was actually bred in New Zealand. Okay. So he has had a short flight before in his history um, and he seemed to have survived that. So that was another thing I was telling myself to try and reassure myself. that. <laughs> um, yeah. And what about your base in the UK? Because you are stabled at the yard of the very lovely David Dole. Yes, who indeed has been so lovely. The whole family and the whole team has been so lovely and so accommodating and so helpful. Um, and have really gone out of my way to, gone out of their way rather, to um, to help me and to help me settle and to help the horse settle and, and things like that. And um, lovely, such a lovely part of the country, which although I've been to the UK quite regularly, as I said, um, not spent quite so much time in the country and on horse facilities. So it's been wonderful and fascinating learning and seeing how uh, they run the yard um, and the, the how the horses are managed here and things like that. So, you know, whatever happens at Burley, I've had a wonderful time and learnt a huge amount already and I've only been here a couple of days. <laughs> I was going to say, you've only been here four days and counting, four days and counting, yeah. something like that. There is so much more, so much more we hope to come. Um, and what about Burley? Have you been to Burley? 
Yes, I came as a spectator, I think in 2015 or 2016. And, you know, I've been watching it on, on TV my whole life, but nothing compared to finally getting there and seeing it um, firsthand. And, you know, jaw dropped and gobsmacked and just made me want to get there even more. And can't wait. I've been trying to visualize riding there, you know, riding through those crowds and riding through that atmosphere and those tents and flags and, and loudspeakers, trying to prepare my brain into thinking that it's done it before so I won't get too um, kind of gobsmacked when I actually do it. <laughs> It is it is one of those really, really special venues. Um, and I was going to say, I'm not sure anything can prepare you, but then I thought that was the most unsupportive thing I could possibly say, Sarah. So um, yeah. I will I will move swiftly on. But it is epic. I mean, the the feeling of Burley and, and kind of the big five stars and the, the events over here that get such huge crowds is just absolutely incredible and something very, very special. Um, what do the next few weeks look like for you well I think um well David's got a horse aiming for um Burley also so we've had a bit of a chat and I'm hoping to slot into his routine actually (laughs) tag along um with how he's preparing his horse Galileo for Burley so I think we're I'm going to visit his gallops on on Friday and uh might have a little jump on Sunday um, and things like that and keep the horse ticking along training. I think David's also got an event uh, with some other horses, Wellington, which I'm quite keen to come along to to see and uh, might might be able to bring my horse along as well so I can have a ride around in some atmosphere um, and pretend I'm, I'm competing and pr- help prepare myself. <laughs> um, but, uh, yes, David's been so helpful. I'm... I'm Luckily enough, I'm hoping just to tag along with with him and his preparation and learn from his experience and um, hope it prepares us as as well as we. As you say, it's a bit hard to know if you're prepared 100. percent But um, doing you can the only best do can. your best. You can only That's do your it. best. You absolutely can. Um, and you even met the absolute legend that is Spike the Vet. I tried very hard not to be a dorky fangirl, but I don't think I succeeded. Um, he was brilliant. Yeah, he had gave my horse a look over uh, to see if he, you know, travelled okay and if there was anything we could do to help him. Um, and, yeah, I was – he's a, he's a lovely guy and a funny guy, <laughs> but also really insightful and really, really knowledgeable. And, I yeah, learned a lot just from his visit about my own horse. Well, look, there are a very, very big couple of weeks coming up. We cannot wait to follow your journey. I hope you're going to take other eventing podcast fans along for the ride with you because it is a huge old adventure and a huge credit to you to be able to do it and to kind of take the leap. So good luck. Enjoy every moment of it. And I will look forward to meeting you in person at Burley uh, to have a well-earned drink, I imagine. Thank you so, so much for having me. And I look forward to it. Oh, Sarah, it's going to be an epic few weeks coming your way. Uh, Listeners, if you want to get behind Sarah and her journey, you can do so. Uh, Go and follow her over on Instagram, Facebook at Sarah Clark Equestrian, and you'll get lots of behind the scenes insights, I'm sure. Uh, But we will look forward to watching with much, much interest, much anticipation over the next few weeks. Um, And I just realised that the question that I normally start a cup of tea show with Sarah is what are you drinking because I guess you Aussies don't have quite the same affection for a cup of tea as we I I am a huge fan of tea I am a big tea drinker I don't do coffee I do do tea I'm I'm usually drinking either a green tea or a black English breakfast but I'm I'm on the yard at the moment actually and I haven't had time to make one so I'm just sucking on a drink bottle of water (laughs) Well, I'm glad that we have converted you. Um, might have to get you a black English breakfast tea. Put a drop yeah. of milk in there. Just a nice drop of milk. Well, this is the thing. I'm living with the dolls on a dairy farm and an ice cream business, and I'm allergic to dairy. Oh, no, you're allergic to dairy, so you can't. Oh, my goodness. Okay, fair enough. But Which is why I'm black tea. But I can highly recommend the, the, the Lecoq 
um, the Lecoq dairy, dairy-free sorbet, or is it vegan ice cream? I think it might be called vegan ice cream. I think is, I tried some of that. Was it the mango? Yes, it's brilliant. Oh, it's lovely. Um, David's lovely father bought the media scent at badminton a big old delivery of ice cream and I was literally the most popular person in there and they were like probably by the time we'd kind of shared them out amongst the like he bought quite a lot and then but there were probably a few people that came in later and there were about three left and I didn't really know how to distribute fairly between who was left so I sort of kind of left the box and let them all fight it out um but that was my choice and it was delicious so yeah Lake Rock Dairy ice cream. yes as we've said before I mean basically um I think David could have the eventing podcast um, covered with ice cream advertising, to be honest, because we're all over it. Uh, Look, Sarah, big few weeks coming up and good luck. Enjoy it. And uh, yeah, we're just so excited for you. Thank you so much. There you go, listeners. A little insight into what it has taken, Sarah, to get over here onto UK soil to compete at this year's Land Rover Burley Horse Trials, which are taking place the 1st to the 4th of September, just a couple of short weeks away. If you haven't already, then go and check out the Inside Burley podcast series. Uh, There is a a brilliant compilation episode with lots of different people, including the likes of Tom McEwen, Ross Cantor, uh, Ian Stark, talking about their favourite moments of Burley. Um, But also find out from Piggy March and Philip Searle, what it takes to get around Burley, because that one is definitely well worth a listen. And we've got lots more coming your way as well. But for now, that is all we've got time for. We'll be back very soon with more. Thanks for listening. This is what the Olympic gold medalist, Carl Hester, has to say on Team NAF. My job in all of this, of course, is to be able to say to the experts, you know, this is what I feel the horse is doing. This is what I would like it to look like. What do you suggest? And I'm lucky to be able to have somebody uh, that I can ask those questions to. Because, of course, they are the experts. They're the people that I have to put my trust in and the horses. You know, we want to ride on teams. We have to think of safe sport. We know that NAF leads the way in that. I have this really wonderful relationship that I feel is trustworthy. I can ask what I like. And at the end of the day, it's how our horses look. And I mean, I think we could safely say that, you know, when you look at the type of horses we have and the covering of muscle and, and condition that they're in, that things are really working well for us.